CNBC TV 18. Watching us here on a fresh new episode of The Weekender on CNBC TV 18. And today I walked down the old office of Tata Consumer Products. It's a heritage building of a heritage company which is actually now looking to become the biggest FMCG company in India. What are the plans and importantly, how is Sunil D'Souza as a person? We find out in this show. Come with me. It's a pleasure Hi. to be here. What a wonderful building this is. Uh, what, 100 plus years old? Sort of, yes. Wow, that, that, that's the beauty of the Tatas, right? Every time you go there, there's so much heritage. I'm told that this uh, uh, thing is, is something special. You want to tell us about it? Significantly more than my net worth. <laughs> wow. Looking at your journey, you started out as someone at Lipton, which was an alliance between Unilever and PepsiCo. Then there was PepsiCo for a long time. And you ended up at a place which had an alliance with PepsiCo and Tata's, Narishko, which you bought. Um, interesting uh, turn of events with some whirlpool in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I started my career with Unilever as a management trainee. Mm -hmm. Then for a brief period moved to Coke in India. Uh, then 15 years with PepsiCo in Southeast Asia. And that was probably the most exciting learning opportunity. Uh, but then PCPL beckoned. Right? And the whole story was that the group wanted to change its foray into uh, consumer businesses. Mm. We've got the brand name, we've got the resources, what does it take to change? And that was a temptation I couldn't resist because, and I've absolutely enjoyed every moment of the ride. What part of, uh, you know, a consumer business is closest to your heart? The biggest thing about a consumer business is you've got to get both strategy and execution right. Hmm. Right. Uh, I've heard a statement saying uh, execution without strategy will get you somewhere, but strategy without execution will get you nowhere. Oh, right. So in a consumer business, it's not enough to get one or the other right. You've got to get both the pieces absolutely right. Until TCPL, there wasn't a big consumer story success from the House of the Tatas. I mean, what did you bring from all the learnings that you've had all, at, at all the places that you just spoke about? I don't think it is me. I think the group broadly realized, like I said, we've got a big, or the biggest brand name in India. Yeah. The four letter world called Tata. You've got the biggest amount of resources. You've got the biggest amount of trust in Indian consumers. But we've not got our act together, either in the portfolio or the distribution or the branding, whatever. So it was not one piece that we put together. The board the chairman and the board were very, very clear. We have to put all the pieces together and build a premier FMCG company in India. The FMCG business is not complicated. It's only, in my mind, it's three pieces. You've got to have great products and innovation. You've got to have great brands and distribute. All the three pieces, we were significantly behind industry. And when you pointed out to the board and saying, this is what we want to do. I look at Tata Consumer. Earlier, it was looked at purely as a commodity company. You guys have, with the consolidation, uh, the corporate actions that you've done, tried to decommodify it a bit. And we saw that in the way, uh, you know, the market rewarded you all for it as well. But then come the last two years, the vagaries of commodity prices have again made it into a bit of a commodity company. I mean, how are you trying to further decommodify the business? So, Manglam, like I said, we're on a journey. Yeah. I would say we're in very, very early days of uh, where we should be. Hmm. Uh, it's a long way to go. So we focus the last two years on building the basic capabilities that are required for an FMCG company. Hmm. So we put a, innovation is big. So I've got a great R&D team now, right? And the speed at which we're churning out products is phenomenal. The last quarter compared to the year before, we are at 2x in terms of new product launches. Hmm. Uh, distribution, right? We actually, I would say we press control all Dell. Yeah cleaned it up and started from scratch and built up an entire uh, new distribution uh, system, uh, go-to-market. And we are right now touching about, I would say about 
by the end of this month or so, we should be at 1.5 million outlets touching directly. Much ahead of your uh, guide in March 2023. Correct. And then the other piece was we've got the Tata brand name, but we've never advertised or built brands, right? So we, the marketing team stepped back, put up the entire brand architecture, and now we started powering it. So you see every quarter we are putting a little bit more, little bit more, making sure that we are putting branding pieces into play. Digital, we were significantly behind. For, yeah. for, a, for a group which is known for technology and stuff, we were, we were not quite there. And we built up a digital team from scratch. I would say we are just about average now. Hmm. We're still not, but we are coming from behind. We've got a long way to go. Now we build the capabilities. The portfolio transformation is work in process, right? So. Yes, we are still highly tea and salt dependent, but if you look at a percentage of sales, the tea business is starting to come down because the rest of the businesses are powering. So you are excited about the future, the long-term vision that you have. Can you tell us, uh, if you can quantify, what is it that you would have achieved for you to be saying that, okay, you know, what we've done is amazing and uh, now I can relax? I think we've got a long, long way to go for that. Like I said, the, the ambition of the group is to build the premier FMCG company in India. The premier FMCG company in India currently by sales is a good four and a, uh, four and a half, five x away from you. So is that, that's that's, that's why I'm saying we've got a long way to go. You've uh, demarcated your India platform, India consumer business platform via your core which has tea, coffee, then you have uh, the kitchen pantry platform, which has dry fruits, uh, all of that. And then you have the ready to cook uh, stuff. You have the protein platform, which is extremely new. You have the liquids platform. And then you have uh, the snacking platform. That's what it's called, right? That's right. Uh, what is the revenue mix of this right now? And what is the ideal revenue mix according to you? Like I said, right now we're heavily weighted on tea and salt, right? I in, in the India context, tea and salt would probably be 90% of my revenues right now. Mm -hmm. But over a period of time, I would expect that to come down significantly because the opportunity in ready to drink beverages or in mini meals, snacking, etc., is significantly large. We've just started our journey, long way to go. Protein is a platform for the future because globally protein is taking off. Uh, India still very early days. We're just making sure we are there when the platform takes off and we've still got to flesh out our entire uh, play in protein. Let's talk about the liquid business itself. I mean, you do roughly, what, about uh, 150 to 180 crore per quarter in terms of revenues coming in from Narishko. Um, I'm just trying to understand where does it settle once its growth path is defined? So, so let me define the opportunity in a different way. Okay. You'll see a lot of our competitors talking about a single brand being a billion dollars. Yes, we've, we've yeah. heard that. So if there is a single brand of a competitor being a billion dollars, so the runway for us in terms of growth is significantly higher. So how do you uh, manage to make the product healthy and fun at the same time? I mean, just trying to understand the positioning. Functional products hmm. are gaining ground. Okay. The catch is to make sure the functional products also have the emotional connect or the fun element to it. Now, the campaign that we've run, right, it's all about no gas, right? right? And if you watch the ads, they're extremely uh, humorous, engaging, right? And therefore, I would want to try that product. And once we, we figured out, once consumers try that product, they're hooked onto it. So that's one. Second is now we're extending Tata Gluco Plus into more formats. So we've got drinking jelly. Hmm. Right? Uh, simply as a product itself, it's phenomenal. So as long as I distribute and I get my sampling through, then the consumer is there with me for a long, long, long time. But simply the experience of drinking jelly and that jelly starting to yeah. break in your mouth, I think that is a fantastic feel. I think you would have got that from your running experience because a lot of runners have that drinking jelly. Eh, just out of context, is it a KRA for people in the Tata group to be runners? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> It's just that for me, I run early in the mornings on weekdays. Okay. I, I'm not, I, I don't run marathons, but uh, for me, running does two things. One is I keep fit, but more than that, when you're running for an hour, etc., it clears your mind in the morning, right? And then when you come to the office, you're hitting the ground running. Let's continue our conversation. So, 
water you've spoken about that you've spoken about tata gluco plus the liquid opportunity etc you've not shied away from a lot of acquisitions there is word that you're on the prowl for bisleri is that true you know mangalam the big thing is in india anything that happens in the m and a space yeah lands up on the tata tables either at bombay house or here and it doesn't take too long for people to put in a little bit of spice and blow it up even if they heard a whiff of something okay. right so we are looking at all opportunities but i wouldn't comment on anything specifically so this was just a whiff that came and there wasn't much spice to it and all of that and stuff right i just leave it at i wouldn't comment on it right so we're on a strong wicket organically we will look at all inorganic opportunities as well at some point you will have to look at inorganic because of the 2000 crore plus cash that's sitting on your book So this is where the magic happens huh this is where you taste your products part of the magic happens because the beverages uh, we would normally taste the new samples out here there is an array of products you taste five you don't like one at all but that does extremely well in all the other parameters and you're like no i mean just wanted to understand what wh what is the proportion of your own taste gut and how much of that is data so so mangalam i'll give you a, a secret right yes products which i like normally don't do well and products which do well i might not like oh, this wow. is this is history but that said uh, i rely extremely highly on consumer research what is the threshold of a gross margin for you to enter new products so uh, it's different for different uh, uh, segments that we play in for example uh, in packaged beverages i would say about a 35 is 35 to 40 is the right number uh pantry is probably right now it is double digits to about a 20 25% uh spices has to be 30 thereabouts soul full and all the mini meals snacking breakfast cereals has to be 50 or thereabouts a large part of your business which is international which is facing a serious amount of macro headwinds right now um how do you deal with that i mean what parameters are you looking at and when do you go back to the double digit margins that that business was doing earlier so so ac acutely aware of the pressure on the international business so we are doing two three pieces out there so number one is we've announced our global simplification number two we've simplified to say we have three big markets hmm. it's the uk us canada only different questions for different markets but also the background of the simplification and we're doing structural cost exercise to make sure it's lightweighted because whatever cost i release in that business i will plow it back into ant which is one thing which was missing ant and innovation was one thing which was missing in the international businesses we've already started the background work on the simplification we're waiting for the nclt process yes. in india to go through uh, we've started work on the cost structures out there which will probably be about 3 to 6 months down the line Uh, and we've started pricing uh, up which is again we've got to give about 90 days notice so i would say about q4 onwards you should start seeing the trajectory change significant that makes sense and on anp itself i mean 6 6 and 1/2% 7% is what you typically have been doing and you said that you have been under investing in advertising and promotion where does that number settle at i would say in the short to medium term about a 7 and 1/2 to maybe a eight number is a palatable number and that will come as we grow scale as we get more cost leverage hmm. and start putting money back out there and uh, what margin band are you comfortable with at the ebitda level uh, at the company level i would say short to medium term we should be north of 15 short to medium term longer term you can see our competitors are significantly higher we need to get to that competitors level. are upwards of 20 some of them Absolutely. at least but you know just wanted to understand on that itself um how do you compete in the snacking space without entering chips bhujia or uh, kurkure like products and i'm quoting uh, you from your uh, comments in uh, the conference call these are the products that you don't want to look into so 
here's the thing i wouldn't go and play where there are two entrenched competitors who have got competencies far beyond what i have right or far far beyond what i can build in the short term and if you look around food and beverage is a huge 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 opportunity in india right so therefore i would avoid those spaces but there are enough spaces for us to play in both currently large as well as emerging so i'm just trying to figure out where are these spaces that you are looking at what so, 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 so let me give you one small example yeah, of give me a snippet give me a bite into that so soulful is our big carrier right now into the breakfast mini meals and uh, hmm. uh, uh, snacking right uh, very very strong brand only 15000 outlets now we've grown it to 400000 outlets and you can we've grown 100% 120% roughly last quarter hmm. we use that story to enter the space of uh, masala oats right in 3 months in modern trade i have close to a double digit share uh, where i am present there is a whole pipeline of products based on the soulful platform which we are going to grow into and these might include getting into categories which are large concentrated but we will get in with a completely differentiated play so we might not play that whole category but we will slice it in a manner where we will play a specific end where the consumer is also looking for certain other benefits you do see a lot of other competitors doing some really best in class things when it comes to selling digitally or having those uh, you know data analytics sort of things to optimize and make it a lot more efficient how how heavily invested uh, invested are you in that so just like i mentioned we've put a huge amount of focus into the r&d and innovation team we put a huge amount of focus on the digital team yes we were coming from significantly behind like i said i we are about average right now hmm. but we've got a very clear road map to be best in class so over the last 2 two and a half years we've put in a completely new dms distributor system we've got a completely new salesforce application uh, so now we've got real time data of what the salesman does now that i've got data flowing i need to move into the next level of two things one is analytics on the data and then predictive selling hmm. like what you mentioned i mean ideally th- my dream is when the salesman lands up at the outlet he pulls it up he doesn't need to do anything the geotag picks up this outlet picks up the history saying last time by the way the salesman the this outlet did not buy the tetley 25s did not buy the soulful uh, 100 gram pack and did not pick up tata salt light please do this and by the way if you need to offer a special deal here is an extra deal that would be magic because then that takes out the data overload completely and transfers it to analytics right that's that's exactly what my question was pertaining to uh, as far as your uh, sampan and now in rasa products are concerned Are consumers liking it? Because I've tried a few of them, and uh, they haven't been the best in class. Let's let's uh, let's be honest out there. So I would sincerely urge you to try the Tata Sampan Yum Side that we've launched. That in brings India. me to my next problem: yeah. that not all products are always available at all the stores. Not yet, because we've just about relaunched this entire space. Maybe about uh, just about fifteen twenty days back. we have launched the ready to eat we have still not launched the ready to cook the mm. gravies those gravies are absolutely out of the world and i should tell you this we had a board meeting uh, last month right month of september and for lunch uh, the only thing that we served is either products I and mean, we had not told the board mm. that uh, we served products which were either cooked in the gravies so mm. only the protein pieces were added uh, in the gravies and or the ready to eat products and people couldn't make out the difference and 5 to 10% eps accretion on account of these simplifications will happen is there any more uh, fruit to be had by shaking the tree a little more one step at a time right so right now in the short to medium term we can see that 4 to 5% once you finish this integration coming through of course that's not the end when you again uh, look a little bit deeper you'll find more opportunities and it all boils down eventually to the return on equity and return on capital employed where we are significantly behind and we've got a long way to go what is the long way i don't know that in the short to medium term i would target to at least double my roc okay. in, in the short to medium term your ideal revenue mix between international and india uh right now it is about 2/3 india 1/3 international i would guess over a period of time it will probably be in the short to medium term it would probably be 75 25 because international also will start coming to the party in terms of growth 
your ideal mix between rural and urban? Oh, I would want, right now, like I said, we are two-thirds urban, one-third rural. Ideal state, I would say slightly longer medium term, if I may, I would want at least a 50-50. And your ideal revenue coming in from dry fruits? Right now, my run rate, annual run rate, and I'm talking like a startup, right? Hmm. My annual run rate is about 40 to 50 crores, just online. Hmm. And the big business for dry fruits is offline. I've just got to make sure I modify my packaging, my marketing mix, and make sure I provide the packages which the retailers want. We've just about started working with, we'll go to modern trade first and then to general trade. I would say doubling every year, tripling every year is shouldn't be a challenge. Your ideal mix for spices? Oh, spices, we've, we're just scraping the, uh, I mean, opportunity right now. Spices needs to get onto a different trajectory. It's a 25,000 crore business in Absolutely. India. So, I mean, you've seen... And we've got the Tata Sampan brand name. Uh, the catch is there is no significant national brand. There are one or two, but I wouldn't call them national brand because they don't play across. Tata name appears, I mean, it, it appeals to everyone in the country. I've just got to modify my product and my marketing mix to make sure I address the right consumers. On an average, a Starbucks store does what? Two and a half, three crores of sales every year? Uh, thereabouts. That would, be, that would be the number. But the biggest thing that we figured out as we expanded Starbucks is as we get into tier two, tier three cities, hmm. uh, we needed to connect better to the Indian consumer on the product, uh, the menu and the ambience. Hmm. In addition, uh, the Starbucks global team is very, very clear. India is huge opportunity now. So now the game is how fast can we scale? And if you look at any other market around the globe, uh, where Starbucks operates. Uh, we are under-indexed. So suffice to say that the next 300 will come at a much faster clip than the first 300. Oh, absolutely. And you're looking at what, 500, 600 stores uh, in the next couple of years as a whole for the country? We are looking at a significantly expanded rate of uh, open, store opening, I would say. And uh, the partnership continues, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a partnership which has worked perfectly, right? I think the trust between the partners is so human, uh, immense and the values and ethics of both the corporations are so similar that it absolutely works brilliantly. What would an ideal uh, retirement be for you? It's, it's far away, uh, I would presume. L let me say what my wife tells me. Yes. She said you have to make sure when you retire, you're not sitting around and chewing my brains off, right? <laughs> You've got to figure out something which keeps you occupied. When you would have left Tata Consumer, um, what kind of legacy would you like to leave behind? I would want to fulfill the aspirations which the group got me here for, which is to build the premier FMCG company in India. If you've done that, and that is across all parameters, then I would be happy. That would be great. Thank you so much. Thank this you. was an amazing conversation, Mr. Thank Thank you. You, sir.